Hey guys, a few weeks ago I made a couple of these rainy lake signs on my Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro and they turned out very nice, but they weren't ready to hang on the wall. Follow along today as we get them ready to go. We're not going to be doing finishing quite yet, but uh, we'll get the manufacturing part of the job all finished. Thanks for stopping by. A couple of months ago I made this sign on my Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro. And as you can see over here, there's a couple of uh, smaller versions that I made. So basically three different sizes. It is mid-September and we are starting to run out of season for having liquid water in the uh, garage without keeping heat on at all times. And I don't really want to be doing that. So let's get this thing dialed in. What I'd like to do today is get all four of these signs kind of set up so they could be hung on the wall and maybe start looking at doing some different techniques for finishing. Let me get you guys set up on a stand. I'll bring up a uh, piece of scrap of steel and we'll start laying up getting ready to do some plasma cutting. First thing we need to do is make some wall hangers. I'll throw a quick little picture of what I have planned up on the screen. You can see here we've got four wall hanger brackets with a, uh, with a keyhole cut in the top of them. And uh, I'll make this so that it kind of goes up, over, and up, and then the keyhole will hang on the wall. I'm hoping this 16 gauge steel will be heavy duty enough to support the sign. I do have some 14 that we can switch to if this isn't going to work, but uh, eh, this should do the job. Before we start anything, I like to do a dry run. So we've got it sitting here ready to go. Uh, I've zeroed the torch where I want it to start and we'll uh, tell it to do the dry run. That looks good to me. Go back to zero. Now I need to grab my welding helmet and uh, we'll turn this thing on and see if it's going to cooperate. Turn the dry run bit off. Ground clamp is attached to the work. Now we've got to check that. That uh, looks like it did a nice job. That's pretty much exactly what I was looking for. Let me dig out the other three from the uh, table here. Four very nice little tabs. Trouble is, we're gonna need four for each sign. So we've got uh, three more sets we need to cut. I think I got enough scrap material on this piece that we should be able to uh, knock those out. Let me uh, fire these off and I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to start working on the signs. Here's a handful of those uh, hangers that I got cut out yesterday. Good selection. That should uh, do for an extended period of time. Any signs that I'm going to be making. And rather than finishing this, these up last evening, I ended up going to a, a garage sale and picked up this beauty. My intention with this is to uh, use it to clean up stuff like this. Uh, the signs themselves, I kind of want the blackened edge where it's been cut with the plasma cutter, but for these hangers, I want them to be uh, relatively clean so that they get welded on nice and flush. Got this beauty for uh, a really good price and uh, it needs a little TLC, but uh, let's put a new belt on it and see how it works. Get a little adjustment here so that it, uh, the belt tracks good. Now we'll try cleaning up some of our uh, tabs. Needs a little bit more sanding, but that's uh, that's cleaning up quite nice. Let me uh, get this little stack of them 
ground down like that and uh, I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready to continue on with this project. I didn't clean them all up but I've got a good start on them. I got some uh, yeah, hand seamer, three and a half inch hand seamer pliers and we'll just kind of bend this over. The trick here is that we want the bend to actually happen rather than just bending the keyhole. So this might be a little tricky. Grab a pair of needle nose and we'll tweak the other side. And uh, not perfect, but that's a good first one anyways. We'll uh, make a few adjustments and continue on. Next item I've picked up to work on this uh, little project is a spot welder. This is the uh, Chicago Electric from uh, Harbor Freight Tools. Princess Auto in Canada sells a similar product for a similar price. And uh, they're relatively manual. We'll have to do a bunch of setup on it here, of course, but we've got these copper uh, points that go into the tongs. This opens the tongs. You have to line them up, of course, and you clamp your piece of metal in between. And there's a little toggle switch right in here that you flip and it, it turns on the spot welder. You leave it on for a couple of seconds until it fuses the, uh, the two layers of sheet metal together. And because they're built in China and uh, they don't know exactly what country they're going to, it just comes with a end cord. And I picked up a welder plug from my local hardware store. This is the 240 volt model. They uh, have a, a 120 volt as well. I figured since I have the, uh, the 240 volt set up for the use of the plasma cutter, we may as well get the 240 volt and it's gonna work better. And now you can see without adjusting this upper arm at all, it was back quite a bit. But now that I've put the, uh, the points in, they line up almost perfect. Uh, I think we'll have to uh, adjust the, the clamp arm here because this should be closed and putting a little bit of pressure on the joint when we're welding. That feels like we've got a, uh, we're able to put a fair amount of pressure on there to clamp things together and get at the electrical switch. Now we need to figure out what we're gonna do for the plug. What we have here is a couple of scraps that are left over from in between the letters on the signs that uh, just fell out when I was cutting and I uh, ground them off a little bit with the sander and we'll give it a try. So we're clamped good and solid. Let's give it a little bit of heat. Looks like we got good penetration. Definitely doesn't want to peel off of there. I think that's a good solid stop, spot weld. Let's try another one on here just to see how it behaves. So you notice how we got a spark off of that one. That's because I just didn't hold pressure on there quite enough. So we'll have to make sure that we do that. There is our first spot weld. I'm going to start off with uh, one of the small signs and uh, there's less dross on the out front surface of this. And this one, uh, this is the, the uh, back. You'll notice it has a little bit more dross on it. But we'll take one of our tabs. I think I've got that lined up fairly straight. And uh, I stuck a little can under the far end of the sign so that it uh, is sitting relatively level. Let's give it a little bit of heat. That looks to me like we've got a, a good solid hanger on there. Now you'll notice that I put the, the top of this kind of level with the top of the letters. So we'll come over to the R and do the same thing. There we go, we've got those tabs mounted. Now what I wanted to do, not necessarily to hang it from, but just so that it doesn't uh, sit crooked on the wall. So I'm gonna take two more tabs and put them down at the bottom.
there we are we've got one of the uh, the small signs with the four hangers on it i'm actually uh, pretty impressed with that this uh thickness of metal this is 16 gauge metal i don't think we need to worry too much about the bottom of the letters here they seem you know this short distance they're not bad the uh the larger sign especially the largest of the three sizes that i made the bottom of the letters are too floppy and we're gonna have to put something across there but i think this is going to work good for this size sign i got one more like this to do then I'll uh, bring over the next size and we'll see how that's going to turn out. This is the uh, the largest of the signs that I've made. And the details in the trees, I think, are the nicest of the three different sizes. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, the bottoms of these letters are a little floppy. Let me uh, spot weld the tabs on the back here. And then we'll take a look and see if we can figure out some way of making that a little more... Uh, rigid. I originally was going to try TIG welding this across. This is just a piece of, uh, you know, I don't know, 16th inch welding rod. Um, rather than attempting to uh, TIG it, I'm going to try and use a spot welder and see if we can make it work. If for no other reason, then we've got the stop spot welder all set up. Definitely attached. So I'm finding out the trick here is to not put a whole lot of heat into the welding rod all at one time. Several uh, light little shots goes uh, or does a lot better job than uh, one steady uh, shot of uh, heat. If we look down the sign here, I don't know how well that's showing up at the angle I can do, but you can see that there's a little bit of uh, warp to it. I'll go along and straighten all the wire out once the sign has cooled off a little bit. I'm not going to burn my fingers doing it. From a manufacturing standpoint, that is basically ready to hang on the wall. We've got the uh, welding rod tacked all the way across the bottom. We've got four, well, two hangers and two standoffs attached. And uh, now it is basically ready to do some finishing on. But that's for another video. The next video in this series, we're going to be uh, looking at some different finishing options and see if we can find something that we're going to like on this seal. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Greatly appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. And uh, if you got this far, can you maybe give me a like? If you're not already, hit the subscribe button. And we'll catch you guys in the next mess. Thanks for watching.